What is luck? Well, of course, luck is that unpredictable and capricious force that can change your life at a moment's notice. People have spent a vast amount of time and resources in trying to control both good and bad luck. Civilizations throughout history have put vast resources into controlling the forces of nature because, of course, the forces of nature are the same process that we call luck. You're lucky if you have adequate rains and a good crop. You're unlucky if you have inadequate rains and a poor crop. Right now in Berkshire, we're a bit unlucky because we have a shortage of water. And even the, uh, the common ways that we would tend to control luck or try to control luck have been passed down through generations. Things like avoid Friday the 13th, knock on wood, don't walk under a ladder. Of course, the origins of these superstitions, if you like, have been passed down, but they're often lost in history. There were 13 people at the Last Supper. When you knock on wood, you're trying to evoke uh, the good officers of the pagan tree gods. And the ladder against the wall, perhaps on a road or a pavement, forms a triangle. And the triangle is a symbol of the Trinity. So when you walk under the ladder, you break the Trinity and thereby bring bad luck on yourself. Quite a lot of research has been done to see whether superstitious practices, the attempt to control luck, actually have any value. Long story short, they don't. No superstitious practice actually affects any outcome in any way. So let's ask the question, does luck even exist? If the things that we do to try and control luck aren't of any use, is there such a thing as luck? Again, quite a lot of research has looked into actually, does luck exist? Is there a thing called luck? And do lucky people actually have some special psychic ability or some other kind of special characteristic that makes good things happen to them? And the answer is no. Luck, as we think about it, as this unseen and capricious force doesn't exist. And yet, there are quite a few people who would consider themselves to be very unlucky, quite a few people who would consider themselves to be very lucky, and a fair proportion who would say neither one nor the other. Now, this is important because unlucky people, or people who say that they're unlucky, will tend to have poorer work experiences, they'll have less job satisfaction and potentially a poorer job history. They'll report poorer satisfaction uh, and uh, more troubled relationships and they'll often report financial concerns. People who would consider themselves to be lucky, <laughs> unexpectedly, tend to have good job experiences, they enjoy what they do and they find it interesting and fruitful. They have better or even uh, much better relationship experiences and they would tend to report more satisfaction with their financial situation. So there is a real difference between unlucky people or people who consider themselves to be unlucky and people who consider themselves to be uh, lucky. Unlucky people have a poorer quality of life on average than people who think of themselves as lucky. So what's going on? If this thing called luck doesn't exist, what is the the, the factor or this one of a series of factors that makes very unlucky and very lucky people different. Well, Professor Richard Wiseman from the University of Hertfordshire, Hertfordshire about 10 years ago did some experiments which I read about first when I was a university lecturer. He advertised in the newspaper for people who are very uh, unlucky and very lucky to come into the lab and do some studies. In the first instance he had uh, the unlucky and the lucky people uh, come to the lab one by one and he asked them to count the number of photographs in a newspaper and he said he'd time them. So the unlucky people took about two minutes and the lucky people took about a couple of seconds. Why the difference? Well on the second page of the newspaper covering a half of the, 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 the sheet of paper Professor Wiseman had written stop counting. The lucky people had turned the page, seen the instruction to stop counting, and stopped counting, just a few seconds. The unlucky people had not seen that, and they carried on counting all the way through to the end, and they counted all 43 pictures, about a couple of minutes. So the first thing is, the unlucky people didn't see the instruction to stop counting. They, in essence, missed the opportunity to terminate the exercise early. Adding a further twist to it, in the next study using unlucky and lucky people, Professor Wiseman wrote, stop counting, 
Tell the experimenter you've seen this notice and received $250. Again, when they did the, uh, the experiment, the unlucky people tended not to see the notice, and hence they didn't get $250. So I guess you could call that bad luck. But it's not actually luck. It's a perceptual bias. They're, they're not seeing the opportunity that actually exists in the environment to make $250. In essence, they're missing out on opportunities because they're not uh, allowing them or they're not, they're not accessing them uh, through the perceptual system. So if you want to be luckier, one thing you have to do, therefore, is to find opportunities to be lucky. So how are the unlucky people restricting their opportunities to be lucky? And how are the lucky people enhancing their opportunities to be lucky? What's the difference between them? Well. The world that we inhabit is massively rich and varied in experiences. However, we tend to construct the world uh, within our perceptual system that looks relatively stable, relatively normal, and relatively unchanging. But we could construct this particular version of our reality from any number of things that we would see and experience on, at any given time. But basically, we experience the world as we expect to experience it. So unlucky folks expect to experience the world in an unlucky way, and they're not surprised. Lucky folks expect to experience the world in a lucky way, and they're not surprised. We all expect to experience the world as we expect to see it, and we're not surprised. That renders the world for us kind of normal and stable. But if you're towards the side of unlucky, it's also preventing you from having uh, more interesting, novel, exploratory experiences. Often lucky folks say they do more, they interact with people more, they push themselves out a little bit more, they're a little bit more adventurous in the things that they do, and therefore they give themselves more opportunity to experience what you might call good luck, whereas the unlucky people do less of those things. So, if you want to be luckier, then in a sense you've got to give yourself more opportunities to be luckier. And that would be a really good first step on that path. But there are some other ways to be luckier as well, because this research on luck and the difference between people who are lucky and unlucky has thrown up some other interesting insights. And if you want to know uh, how to continue or get on this path of being luckier, watch out for the next film in this series and I'll tell you a little bit more about how to be luckier. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen.